Hey guys, uh, we're here to bring you another episode of the Gorilla Podcast, uh, where we wrap up the events uh, for February this time around. So today on the show, we have Hate, Ogre, and Kage. What's up, players? Hey yo. Hi. So on the docket today, we have uh, a few topics to talk about. Um, the first thing that we have, we have a bit of a finance shop-related news, then we'll get into February characters, uh, the impact on the meta, uh, state of the meta post, Wonder Girl adjustment. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Siege, uh, the Rebirth system announcement, and um, potential March characters, what they, what we think of those characters. And then we sort of have a elephant in the room topic at the end of the show. So uh, right off the bat, we'll get right into the, the boring stuff, get that out of the way first, finance and uh, the shop stuff. Um, there were some subtle changes to the pricing and pack output this month. If you guys uh, have followed my sort of schematic the, the patterns that i've uh, put out there for packs um with the last couple of months i have a calendar up there i think for what shows typical uh distribution of packs and when to expect them and this month threw a curveball because it sort of kept to the same pattern however the packs have either been cheaper or the sh- amount of shards that the, the pack would normally have was increased. So, for example, uh, a pack that was would normally be, for example, 2.5k gems was dropped to 2k, for example, or the 850 uh, gem pack was dropped to 750, which is, you know, awesome. Uh, or in the case of, let's say, an 8k pack, uh, it normally would output 100 shards, but instead it was giving 125 shards. So that was a nice bonus, too. So man, these these new ki- these new players be so spoiled. Back <laughs> in my day, I only had a hundred frags per eight k. <laughs> now they gave one twenty five. So that's actually that's actually a good segue into what this means. So do we expect this type of change to be permanent, or was it just because it's February Valentine's Day kind of theme? I don't know. You know, is this new pack pricing structure something we think we should sort of consider going forward maybe should i rethink all of my patterns and then put out another calendar again or is, do you think this is some kind of ploy to get people hooked and then oh well let's bring it back to what we had before i'm pretty sure it'd be permanent i hope i think wb has the christmas spirit and <laughs> are now finally making it reasonable well you know christmas is coming soon i guess <laughs> that's one of those things right? it's always coming soon yeah all right <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. I mean, that, overall, it's just good news. Um, there's nothing really bad to say about the fact that you know prices being dropped or you know shards being outputted more. You know, that's just good. That's just good news overall. Um, it just you know makes me think that you know what do we what should we expect going forward? Let's hope things at least stay this way and that way. You know, it's a break for everybody. Alrighty. So uh, let's get on to the next part. So February characters uh, and their impact on the meta. So what do you guys think of? Black Lightning and Batwoman and the uh, Katana and Livewire reworks for this month. So, um, hey, take it away. Well, I mean, I do. All the characters I think are are decent characters. None of them are, you know, the Blue Beetle of the month. The Black Lightning's pretty cool. He's an interesting character. He did create a new little mini meta of with himself. Well, I wouldn't say meta, but he created a team that was usable with overheals. So I found that it, he brought he got Enchantress usable again. But at the end of the day, we're not going to see him any, after this month. I mean, unless some, a new character comes out that synergizes with him. I left him Legendary 3, I think. I think I did take him Legendary 4 for Seed the other day. But he's just not a character who's really going to have an impact. And I'm kind of done maxing characters that I don't once, but only once in a blue minute. If I find a cool team... That makes them like I, I like Iron Flash. I actually like a lot more than a lot of other people because he created a, a really awesome team that was usable. But Black Lightning, I don't feel does that. He's a good character. If you like Black Lightning as a character and you just want to use him, you absolutely can, and he can survive in the meta. But he doesn't really do anything to address the meta, and he's not going to be a character that you're probably going to run on really any team that isn't overheal heavy. Um, if you're running an Enchantress, Bane, Black Lightning, and then an extra character, that's great. It will work pretty well. Um, Batwoman, I feel like, is a little bit better of a character. She's another one that I think isn't going to be meta-defining or shift the meta in any way. But I feel like she's she's a pretty strong character. She's a good character. So I do think I'll probably end up taking her Legendary 5 at some point. 
but she's she was once again i i keep hoping and waiting for a character that's really going to make a shift in the meta and i don't think neither one of these characters do that and i'd be surprised um or until they do that you know i don't it's hard for me to get excited and we just haven't had a character in a really long time that accomplishes that Basically, what you'd be expecting is a character that has can't miss abilities and starts with true sight. I didn't have to start with true sight, but uh, the evasion meta has gone on since the dawn of time. It feels like at this point, and you know, nobody, none of the characters that are part of the evasion meta, I feel like need a nerf or any of that. I just we haven't had a character that can both deal with the evasion meta and not get nuked by Wonder Girl, even with the the slightly love tap nerfed wonder girl because she's she's wonder girl is always going to be a part of the evasion meta because all the core evasion characters are energy we need a non-energy character that helps deal with the evasion meta to help shift the meta into something new you mean core anti-evasion yeah that's what i meant to say core anti-evasion and the bad thing is is they keep releasing every month characters that add to the evasion meta or give you something else to do with your evasion meta which really drives me crazy We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the uh, the post Wonder Girl adjustment uh, part of it. But uh, Kage, what do you think about the, um, the 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 two new characters for this one so far? Uh, pretty much the same thing as hey, uh, if you want to create like a if you want to make your tanks more sustainable, like uh, I don't know Donna Troy, because she can take a quite the beating in a match, but she doesn't have any source of sustain. Uh, yeah, that works. But other than that, he's not really, he's not going to be a go-to character players are going to use to win fast matches. If you feel like being creative with your tanks, that's great. Batwoman, uh, she's kind of weird. She's kind of awkward to play just because the existence of turn one taunters and how her kit's designed. Um, so you kind of have to like gimp yourself in some aspects of her kit to, uh, fully appreciate her, which is kind of weird. I wish that they did do something with the meta, but um, it seems like overheals or crit damage down helps you with like uh, surviving the meta, but they don't shift the meta in any meaningful way. Now, uh, I'm sort of in the same boat as you guys. I actually haven't played with Batwoman, so I can't really comment on with uh, like how, she, how good she is until I guess the end of the reset today, right? So I'll finally have her. But, um... Oh, see, Jens today? Yeah. Wow. In like eight hours. <laughs> Seven hours. Get to work. Damn, I haven't played Siege all day. In the case of, um... In the case of Batwoman, I can't really say much. But for Black Lightning, I'm I'm of the boat where I actually like him a lot, but I don't think he's going to be like a meta-shifting character in any way. Uh, the, the thing about him that I feel that would have pushed him over the top is if they just nudged his damage a little bit on his... Third ability, dead shot, higher gun, lead. Uh, I've crit out right out of the gate on a red, and I can't kill them. You know what I mean? And it says heavy damage. So when you think of heavy damage, you're thinking of Larflees, or sorry, heavy special damage. Larflees or um, Zod, for example, as a more recent example. And they can one shot pretty much any uh, red character right off the gate on a crit, right? But he can't. He takes them down to like a sliver of life, and that's just so annoying. <laughs> so. I don't know if it's just my RNG, but I fa- play more matches. And you can just watch it in any of my videos. I always take a person to one or two life. I never seem to kill them. It always takes them to like just a teeny little sliver of life. It drives me crazy. You're talking about Black Lightning? Uh, Black Lightning especially, but it really seems like any character for me. I think it's the damage on his third move is a little bit weaker than it should be. Like if they just nudged it a little bit, it'd be fine. Perfect, right? The fact that he can't kill them on a, on a crit with a, with a heavy damage move is stupid. But now he makes up for this in other places. If you have him overhealed, his basic does more damage than his third ability. Yeah, his basic does real good damage. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes on his basic, you can crit for up to 20 or 30k damage. It's ridiculous. So, um, but that's, that's the interesting thing about his kit. Maybe they made it on purpose so that you would use, uh, the overhealing part of his kit more. So you'd probably start with heal, um, his heal move rather than his third, uh, so that you would set up, you know, things a little bit differently. Or maybe play with, uh, more, uh, overheal minded teams like with Enchantress Lead or something in mind. 
I think he's a good character, and he's probably he's now a staple in my Red Alerts team. So having him in in Red Alerts keeps your guys nice and healthy. And if you have a Deadshot hired gun lead like I do, he uh, well after the first round he should always be overhealed, and he should just crit everybody uh, with his basic right off the bat. All right, so uh, enough about Black Lightning. What do you guys think about the reworks then, about the Livewire and Katana? Honestly, I don't notice any difference in either character. They seem almost exactly the same. Livewire may be slightly better, especially with the can't miss on her basic. Katana was always a good character in my mind, but I don't feel any difference other than that. Uh, Livewire is more annoying in Siege. I wish I'd geared her up, but it is what it is at this point. Uh, I regret taking up Supergirl over Livewire. Supergirl is just trash in my opinion. Well, she has her uses, but I just didn't feel her much this month. I, I gotta uh, agree. I used to like Supergirl, but I took her up for Siege, finished maxing her out, and I'm, I found I don't think I ever used her in Siege anymore after the first couple matches that she got butchered yeah, in. Yeah, she get butchered by Katana, and you're like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks for the, the crit. <laughs> Thanks for the anti-crit. Uh, Katana kills her every single time. Shot like that. Jesus. But uh, Katana, yeah, there's no difference. If you liked her before, you'll like her now. Uh, Fanatic Jalapeno posted something on YouTube, and I was like, dude, why are you salty? <laughs> uh, but that's another topic. I I like them both. Not meta shifting, unfortunately. Not going to be part of the meta. But they're fun. They're fun anti-meta, non-meta characters. I have a I have a small grievance on uh, Livewire's case because she was reworked and part of her rework was to actually reduce the number of evasion stacks so that it doesn't exceed six. And that was because of Wonder Girl. But then that was also pre or post Wonder Girl adjustment. I can't remember. But the fact that her gate was increased to eight makes the fact that her evasion limit being limited at five no longer matters, right? So she was sort of preemptively nerfed <laughs> because of Wonder Girl, how, how she was before, you know what I mean? Yeah. But well, it's not like going to matter anyway, because no one's going to use Livewire after this month. Well, she's an evasion character. She can fit on Batgirl teams, so she's still mm-hmm. usable. And so the next topic here is the state of the meta. I mean, I guess... Yeah, the state of the meta post Wonder Girl adjustment, uh, and let's let's not and let's not just talk about the Wraith Arena. We're talking about uh, the blitzes and the showdowns as well. So, what did you guys think? And also Siege. So, what did you guys think of the meta now after Wonder Girl has been quote unquote nerfed? I don't notice any difference at all, with the exception of there are a couple characters that I can bring to a match that are. There's a couple of characters that you can bring to a match that are usable now. I do like that she was slightly taken down a notch because it did make it a little less oppressive, but hardly notice a difference. Otherwise, the same teams, same everything. Uh, yes and no. There's a difference. I feel like right now in Wraith, no one's really playing. Uh, I think that just be, might be just because uh, the rewards in Wraith are people some characters people already have like right now i'm sitting in top 100 i've barely played uh, i think next week that a change when everybody needs to cap off iron flash oh yeah shoot but um no the other day i was just messing around pvp and i ran into a back girl team and i thought oh what the hell i'm not gonna use steppenwolf zod starfire katana and maybe assault war suit and hey worked out so, I think it's just going to be up to you if you want to be creative, but no one's going to get any more creative. It's going to be, everyone's got the pressure to win, so they're going to go to Wonder Girl or Harley or Batgirl or whatever. And I think if Siege is a thing going forward, uh, we might see a change to the meta overall, um, just because Wraith is going to matter less. So, people are just playing, we're just going to be playing, um, Playing it cool and wraith, while in siege, people are going to be using more bonus tunes. At least that's what I think of. Yeah, I agree. I, I hope siege is a permanent fixture because you do see a little bit more variety, especially because people try to use the bonus tunes as much as possible, and it makes it where in wraith. I know in wraith now, I'm, there's usually only one week out of the month that I need a character at all. So the rest of the month, I either run an auto team, which is usually a meta team, just to 
complete out my 27 missions. Or if I'm actually playing, I play goofy, fun, weird teams because I don't care if I lose. So I do think overall we'll probably see more entertain more entertaining teams in Wraith going forward. The the siege and the showdowns were where we don't see as much um, the meta teams as much. So in any case, um, that aside though, the Wraith arena is still pretty much the same thing. And let's just let's not even talk about the female gem blitz. That was just ugh. <laughs> yeah. Every time I see the female gem blitz, I'm like, oh god, <laughs> <laughs> that was a mess. But okay, let's let's segue from that the the state of the meta there into against the meta, and this is a uh, another another topic brought up by 2d tron so what like what he did with last month uh suggesting characters that we want to introduce uh, into the meta or use into the meta last time we talked about broad time he suggested either medfil or hippolyta so you guys have any any ideas of uh how to use these characters in the meta in any fun ways medfil is a lot easier than hippolyta hippolyta i like her on teams where you can buff if you're not facing wonder girl she's actually really good because i'll use her as either leader or on the team then run another character like Cheetah or I hate to say it, Wonder Girl, that will give you buffs across the team. And then I like to run Steppenwolf lead, and then whatever you want to use as your nuking character, that will be. I mean, a lot of times I'll run higher or red um, Suicide Squad, Deadshot, Power Girl, any of those ones with that team, and then you can just AOE down everyone in one hit. So that's that is a fun use for Hippolyta that works pretty well for me. Um, I don't really find her to be very useful, really, on any other team. Um, stamina ups just aren't worth, you know, aren't good enough to really make any character that much stronger. So, but Medfil, on the other hand, I do like him a lot. And when I was running, I'll include a video of it with this if I can. Um, when I was running my two man teams with Wonder Girl, Medfil was able to keep her alive <laughs> for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> so he he's a fun character. He's good. He doesn't do a lot of damage, but he's really not there to do a lot of damage. His strength downs, his damage immunity is pretty good. I think he's one of those characters that's fairly underrated. And he kind of works in most teams. Like you don't have to have a specific team comp for him. I like him with Poison Ivy because you can copy his two turn damage immunity across the team. So that's always fun. Um, he does work. It's just he doesn't have anything to counter evasion. And I know I harp on this all the time, but that's what you face majority of the time. If you're not facing the Atrocitus teams, you're facing evasion teams. Oh. Yeah, it seems like all the Gear 11 guys are fighting Batgirl and Gear 10 guys are fighting Atrocitus. So, oh, oh, to add on to that, but uh, I remember like a back in the day, there was a guy in the top 100 who was who ran exclusively midfield lead. I don't know if you guys ever noticed. Yeah, was, I remember that. I think, I mean, I think you could do it. I mean, that's turn meter up, you get on the team. Um, you actually could run Medfil lead with Brainiac as a secondary to kind of help the speed up process. Yeah. That could actually be a pretty useful fun team. Episodes where I really wish Doombox was on the show because Medfil is like his favorite character. <laughs> so, do you well, guys think? Do you guys think either of them need a rework, Hip- Hip- Hippo or Medfil? I think both of them could use it. Well, Medfil less so. Hippo definitely needs it. Um. She needs a way to stay alive easier because she just dies so fast. Yeah. I've liked using her and DOJ together. DOJ just spreads its stamina up and keeps the team alive. And you have some goofy fun with that. You know, I might run um, that team I was, that Doombox came up with for Iron Flash, a variation of that with um, Donna Troy and World's okay. Greatest Detective. And I think you could probably get that speed up to go forever with Medfell lead. Yeah. Try it, man. There, so if you use the World's Greatest Detective Donna Troy engine, that pretty much works with anything, right? So, But I think it would work really well with Medfil, and I not, haven't tried that yet. All righty. I guess uh, hopefully that will answer your question, 2D Tron, so we'll just uh, move on from there. In terms of PvP stuff, we were talking just uh, just a second ago about Siege. So at the timing of um, of this recording, uh, we're just nearing the end of Siege. It'll, it'll end at reset uh, after today. So what do you guys think of siege so far this time around what are your thoughts on it so well initially i was very upset about the change in rewards which i still i'm a little perturbed by it because it kind of got rid of the the heavy level competition and there was no need to spend forty five thousand gems but looking back now and it looks like i'm going to be able to get top 60 with only one energy purchase and i don't even know if i necessarily need it but i did it today just to be safe 
Um, I, it looks like I'm going to make top 60, and that means I only have to buy one pack of Legendary 5, my Bat- Batwoman. So I'm like, wow, this is actually a lot cheaper for me if I don't have to worry about buying the gems. And I guess I could do that even if the rewards are higher. But it kind of got rid of the need for that. So now I'm kind of full circle on it. And I'm like, well, if the rewards are better, and I feel like I have to get 45,000 gems worth of Siege Energy. I don't know if I want to do that every month. So now I'm like, well, if they leave it this way, I just won't ever feel the need. I have a feeling they'll make some adjustments just because other than the top 30 people, it seems like everyone kind of thought the same way. Because obviously I only bought one time and I made it to top 60 and I did not do great on Siege. I lost way more times than I normally do. So, so I mean, the Siege, I, I still think Siege is the most fun game mode in the game that we have right now. I just think the tension's not there this month. I remember with Larfleet's, uh, the tension was like off the roof or up the, off the chains. You're like, okay, I'm fighting a Larfleet's, an Atrocitus, and a Wonder Girl. I'm trying to score 18 points. Dear God, what do I do? <laughs> and then this month, it's kind of, eh. Well, I think eh. it goes back to that rewards. And that's where I, you know, for financial purposes, it's better just because you don't care. But now it's like, oh, I lost character. Oh, well. When I played Siege the last two times, it was like, I lost a character. I'm throwing my iPad across the room. Yeah. So I hope, I hope, I hope they return the rewards to that level. And, um, with the rebirth thing around the corner, I do hope they do bump up the rewards. XP meta agents. That would be so wonderful. I guess the best thing to, to, uh, to sort of summarize the differences in the, uh, the sieges was what Hate Mail was saying for the first one, how he was so, like, you know, into siege that every time he lost, he'd get so upset. It got to the point where you were going on vacation that you actually had to think about getting the internet package to be able to play siege, right? <laughs> when you were on vacation and should that be this case like if you were to go on another vacation with the way siege is currently you know being uh slotted right now you probably wouldn't opt for that internet package now would you <laughs> no i'd just buy i'd buy energy twice to make up for it or something yeah. so for me siege is pretty much like it was pretty easy for me to get to where i am i'm not in the top 100 but i'm in like the top 200 300 ish without buying any of the packs and um i was just looking at the characters as is and like i think it's fine i'm i'm fine with a level three or sorry, legendary three legendary four uh, batwoman i don't need her like completely maxed out or anything so yeah and i just coast and i win a few lose a few i haven't revenged at all this time around so i've actually cleared my board completely every time without um refreshing so that's something to think about. Um, I think the way that they changed the revenge system was good. I think that maybe they might have went overboard with making it uh, minus four points instead of minus three points. What do you guys think? It doesn't bother me as much, but for especially your gear 10 players, they're getting slaughtered by that. So I think negative three is probably better. I like the, the rest of the changes and how it's set up. I really don't have any complaints. I mean, I think the system, the bonus characters, everything else was done pretty well. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I wish I got to revenge more with like two bonus tunes, but oh well, that's just how it works out. So I'm not really complaining. I'm still top 100. I don't know how hate is losing a million matches and top 60, and here I am, you know, top 100 losing no matches. So, you, are you clearing your boards? I've cleared like two boards. Uh, see, I always clear every board. Yeah, the bonus, oh, did you? The bonus points. Damn it. Better. 25 points is a lot. 25 points is like... I've been I've been screwing around with revenge, y'all. Well, that's why, too. If you don't use four tunes, you're not, you shouldn't revenge. I've never revenged. This really? Month. Oh, my God. With me. I've, been telling, <laughs> I've been telling you from the beginning of this month, it's not even worth it to revenge. Aren't you Asian? Don't you supposed to know math? God <laughs> dang it. Ugh. Have you not been reading my post? I made like a whole thing about this. <laughs> no, I skimmed your post. It just got really boring. You got to read them. I know it's filled with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's a number. It's like, like more stuff. <laughs> Anyways, you're, not gonna, you're never going to be an accountant with that attitude. <laughs> I don't want to be an accountant. Oh, there you go. So, uh, anyways. <laughs> you're not going to be a mini ogre with oh, that. Yeah. Bonus characters, right, Kage? You only have a couple, so yeah. that means you can only get at most what like four points if you win uh like four bonus points per battle if you go into a battle and use those two, right? 
So let's say, for example, for the sake of argument, <laughs> you would beat a normal <laughs> battle with uh, four characters, and you'd get 12 points, right? And you three started, right? So if you were to clear a board and get 25 points, that's like you won two of those battles for free. Damn it. Okay. All right. Well, well as soon as we get off, I'm going to clear my boards. This is the end of the 10 hours you have left. Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that is what it is. I think Cedrus, um, for the, in that respect, it was done better than before. Well, I just hope that they fix the reward systems because it's just, uh, from the way that I, I, I did the numbers at the beginning of the month, they did increase shard rewards overall, which is good, but the legendary essence reward was not good at all because from the Lar Fleas to the Black Manta Siege, um, you saw like a drop about 25% or more. Um, actually, no, it was like 75% or more in, in terms of legendary essence rewards. And they chopped it again, almost by the same factor when you go from Black Manta to Black, the Batwoman Siege, right? So I don't know what was going through their minds of like, let's just cut it down even more from the last time. Well, they, if they don't want to give that much legendary essence, that's fine. Give something else that makes it worth it. Um, let's hopefully, hopefully, if uh, Siege comes back around, uh, maybe we'll have another adjustment in that respect. So let's get to the hot button topic um, for this week, I guess, in the last few days, rather. Um, in the game itself, there was a newsletter uh, announcing the coming of the Rebirth system. Now, this has a ton of people talking on Reddit and the community center and what have you. Um, a lot of people are basically saying the sky is falling and the walls are coming down around us. So, um, Kage, since you're the, uh, you know, the reporter on the street, um, you want to summarize the, uh, this hot button topic? Oh, so basically a newsletter came out and was like, Hey guys, there's a new way to upgrade your characters. And then, they basically dropped the bomb. It's a soft gear 12. And people are like, dude, I'm free to play. I can't make enough green essence or experience points or whatever else to meet the requirements. And why did you lock my skin change behind a gear 12 uh, paywall? Well, I wouldn't say a soft gear 12. I would say it's more of a soft legendary 10. Yeah, that's that. that's probably what it is. Yeah. Well, so so people, yeah, people are freaking out, losing their minds. Uh, they're thinking, "Well, where's my new content? I want new content, not more upgraded characters." So that I think that summarizes it, right? Yeah, pretty much. And basically, your characters have to be, well, according to the newsletter, and what got everybody worked up the most was that your characters had to be le- legendary five, level eighty, which is a high bar to clear. Because I mean, I don't even have everybody level eighty yet. The only person I know that has an entire max eighty. L5 roster is Karasbrook. And the the big thing, the other thing that really upset a lot of people was that it sounds like Skin Swap, which we've all been waiting for since Whoa. the accidental leak, was tied to this. So we did ask a few questions and we found out a few things in regards to this. One, that there is a larger feature content. Sounds like it's going to be challenging content that you're probably going to want to rebirth some characters for. That will be coming on the heels of Rebirth. So there is, in the relative, and it sounds like not the DC Legends soon, but an actual soon, which we could be wrong, and we've been wrong before, so keep that in mind, that something larger is coming, hopefully very shortly after Rebirth is released. So that part of it is coming out. Now, the community did have a lot of outrage. Stanner posted a post that they are looking into it. One of the suggestions that I've made that seemed to be pretty popular on reddit was instead of having legendary or having rebirth start at level 80 l5 maybe there's a tiered system because i do think there should be some kind of benefit reward to going 80 l5 i mean you shouldn't just because right now a level 80 character is only marginally stronger than a level 70 i mean it's extremely minimal that's why very few people do it so there should be some type of it but the you know maybe make it the last rebirth or the second to last rebirth be level 80 requirement you know, have it start at 70, then 72, 74, 76, or 78, 80, something like that would be my suggestion. And then they really should take away skin swap to it. Um, maybe have skin swap be for a small amount of gems and then it could be free with rebirth or something along those lines. But it doesn't necessarily, it shouldn't be tied to just rebirth because a lot of people like the pre-legendary skins and most whale 
players, you know, end game players, we don't care about the skin swap as much. I mean, obviously we want it as a player, but we don't need it tied to some kind of achievement. Here's here's an interesting thing. You mentioned the fact that um, if skin swap could be something that you could pay for to unlock, right? Even if you weren't um, rebirthed yet. Uh, an interesting thing that you could, if that, that opens the gate to other things. So let's say uh, paying to unlock or sort of re-unlock uh, existing costumes. You could also pay to, for example, reset stats. That could be a thing, right? So oh, I'd love that. Reset skills, reset equipment. Right, I would love that. I would pay, you know, maybe what, like a hundred, like maybe a hundred gems, two hundred gems to, for example, if I could do something like take off all my equipment and get all the gears back, for example. Right, that would be awesome. That would be something that would be interesting, like to think about if you were to implement something like that. But well, it'd be great for people like me who have everybody gear eleven or close to, and then I'm always worried about gearing too fast. Exactly, right? So, so if I could just undo them, then I wouldn't have, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't have to worry about it. Regear them again, because you still have all the gears. You just go, go at it at a slower rate. So, And I would think that they would want to do that, because then I have to spend gems on getting more gear. An interesting thing about the rebirth system, and this is where I have to give props to Stanner, because I saw her reaction within a day, maybe less, that, that post that you mentioned, right? That was right on the heels of the announcement, pretty much, right? So um, I would think that this type of reaction gives us, you know, promise, it gives us hope that a compromise is actually being thought of. Now, I don't expect her to do something drastic as what a lot of people are suggesting on the, on the forums, on Reddit, on the community center. But I would think that they take a lot of what's being said, pull it all together, figure out what's the most common things and what they want to do, and then sort of find the middle ground that will work for everybody here right so if they keep it the way it is from what's being said on the newsletter that's probably not going to go over well but given the way she's reacting um as soon as she has this gives me a lot of hope i mean you you guys feel the same way yeah i really think that they're going to try to make some kind of adjustment to make it a little less painful for the vast majority of players um i mean the rebirth and granted, I know I'm in that 1% that is going to be able to rebirth probably a slew of characters very quickly. I'm really excited for it just because it's something new. And I know it's if they don't make any adjustments, it's probably bad for the game. And I probably won't be thrilled about it either. But in the short term, I'm so desperate for something new and a meta shift where I think this could shift the meta. Because if it requires, especially if it requires a large amount of shards... Like characters that you're going to be able to take Rebirth Five, and I, I, I'm torn on whether I hope they're significantly more powerful than a non-Rebirth character, because if you could take, let's just say, the charge you have the most of, their characters like Zatanna, and unfortunately, Harlequin Magister, people have a ton of shards of too, which is going to stink because I'm so sick of her. But you could take those characters up to Legend a Rebirth Five. You know, they're going to be the ones you see the most of. So it's going to shift. Ha- it's going to be force them into the shift. Very few people. I don't even have very many excess shards of Wonder Girl. Yeah. Um, the only one I'm worried about is stupid MJ. We're going to see her everywhere still. Hal Jordan. Yeah, he might make a comeback, at least for a little while, until people get more excess shards of the other characters. Yeah, I'm kind of torn, too, because and then if, if, it, if it works out like we think it does, and like the Rebirth 5 characters are that much better... DP, I think we lost you if you're saying something. Oh, I wasn't. You're, then you're limiting your usefulness. Oh, okay. You're limiting your usefulness. So that part of it, on. you know, I think is good. And I, I think this will be a good thing long term if they release challenging content behind it. If they make the tier, the rebirth tiered like they should, um, or, you know, make it easier to, if they don't make it tiered or if they're going to leave it the way it is, there needs to be something that allows for you to gain materials easier. Oh, uh, Neutron Star just mentioned Bane is another character with a lot of shards, right? So can you- <laughs> yeah, I'm so not happy about that either. Because my Bane's stupid and doesn't do anything, and everybody else's yeah. Bane's just punch yeah. ridiculously. Bane, 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 <laughs> Bane could be super scary at, like, Rebirth 5 if if we're thinking, like, super stats, right? I have, like, 2,000 excess Bane shards, so he will be one of the first ones I do. I'm with you. Well, wait. What and I'm going to hope that the dumb, dumb animal actually starts punching people and then just sit there like a big blob of nothingness he just keeps taking more venom but doesn't do anything <laughs> uh, now what about the login characters you can only get them to l5 so the heroic challenge characters and the login characters so basically 
you will get up to um, L5 if you do everything in the month, right? But uh, recently, they've been putting out more events like uh, showdowns and so on. Like we had one for Enchantress recently, which was a, a hero challenge character. Uh, Livewire was also a hero challenge character and so on. So now you'll go over L5, right? So there are ways to pick up excess shards of those characters. Uh, and I would expect more of that that to be coming out soon um, for characters. But the most annoying characters, a lot of them anyway, with the exception of MJ, there hasn't been a lot of excess shards. So that'd be kind of nice. You won't see them for a while. That's good. So that, that could help shift the meta if everyone's going rebirth, you know, rebirth meta, right? Yeah, it'd be an interesting. Re- uh, that's what I'm. That's why I'm looking forward to it. I know a lot of people aren't going to be happy, but I only have if it shifts the meta and adds end game content. It's worth it. This could be like a DCL renaissance where rebirth. You re- you required heroes to. It sounds like they, the end game hard- content is going to be hard enough for to justify rebirth existence, and then we'll see just more diversity in the older OG characters that you have a million shards of. Well, the other thing they could do is they could, and I hope to God they take advantage of this. Remember when Gear 11 first hit and characters actually, for a while, it was done correctly where characters like How Jordan Green Lantern was strong enough to take hits from the heavy hitting characters. And it was a very good, solid meta at the time. So I'm hoping they take advantage of this to whenever they have the stat boost from Rebirth, characters like Harley Quinn Majester, she doesn't hit like a freaking Mack truck. And characters like Blue Beetle actually do a little bit more damage to you. This would be a way to boost these characters without actually nerfing them so people don't go crazy and jump drive off bridges um, when characters are actually balanced. The one thing about the rebirth system, and this is very indirect, uh, uh, like the only qualm I have about this is hidden behind the whole skin toggle thing. If you're going to name your system rebirth, at least give Superman a black suit. I mean, come on. (laughs) 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> DP ask on the important questions here. I mean, let's let's get let's let's talk about uh, the next thing on the docket that they announced recently. It was um, the March characters. So we now know that for March we have Mister Freeze at Raza Ghoul coming in, uh, and Penguin and Scarecrow are being reworked for March. So it looks like a sort of Bat Villain month. What do you guys think about these guys? I hope Penguin hits like a Mack truck dog. <laughs> That's, that's not happening. I'm looking forward to Penguin. I hope they do him right. I hope they give him some uh, some abilities to make him even more annoying than he is now. Oh dear he, God, he could be fun. <laughs> you know, if they, I swear to God, if they put a, if they slap a ton on him and you're forced to attack him and you crit, oh dear God, <laughs> it's going to drive a match into eternity. What I am not looking forward to is Scarecrow. More evasion. Yay. It's not evasion. It's anti-hit. Say I'm done seeing misses on my screen. <laughs> Pineapples, banana, I whatever. It's the same <laughs> Pineapple, banana, okay. <laughs> um, I'm actually really excited for Mr. Freeze. He's a character I've been wanting since the beginning of the game. So, I, on the Mr. Freeze topic, I was going to say, yeah, I really want Mr. Freeze, but my my vision of Mr. Freeze was Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, yeah, I want I want Schwarzenegger in there. <laughs> Reza Ghoul is pretty cool. I, I, I want Mr. Freeze to be the animated series of Mr. Freeze. Uh, that was a good one. The Batman animated series one. He, he actually looked, no pun intended, very cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope I hope his all his moves are like ice puns. <laughs> they better be. They had better be ice puns out the wazoo. That's why you want. That's, that's why you want uh, Schwarzenegger's head uh, in in that helmet. That's, that's what I'm saying, right? Uh, if, if they put Schwarzenegger's head in the animated series suit, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I wish that this game had like voice actors to it, and someone can just like hire Arnold to just voice Mister Freeze. Oh, so- right. I mean, you could have Ogre do Arnold. Anybody can do Arnold. <laughs> Ogre, can you do yeah, it's not that hard I mean you just have to do a little bit of voicing <laughs> chill <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> welcome back to the ice age <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh, Razal Ghul now uh, Razal Ghul has a special place uh, with me because I always liked him as a villain in terms of how badass he was like, and there's so much mystery behind him, right? He's, you know, literally in the shadows, right? The League of Assassins. 
And he he sounds like a guy that could do anything, right? Like he could come out of nowhere and just end you and you didn't even know what happened, right? So I expect him to really have that, you know, so that bravado. I want him to have like a huge heavy damage move that's just going to like rip apart anybody, right? I mean, what are you guys expecting for Ra's al Ghul in terms of a character? I hope, uh, I hope he has a passive that if he dies, he revives, but then... He revives with True Sight and kills Wonder Girl. <laughs> well, do we know what affinities there are yet? Blue, so he- yeah, it's green and blue. You should. Oh, that's right. Raz is blue, so I predict Miss double shot to the face and dead. <laughs> Unless they put a can't miss on him, that'd be great. You would think as an as an elite assassin, he wouldn't miss, but. He's just a badass. Okay, so I really hope he is like his rep. He, he's rep well or correctly represented in the game. So they do him justice. So we'll see. Um, all right. Well, let's move on from there and get to finally the elephant in the room. So uh, the... Or rather, the ogre in the room. All right. The ogre in the room. The ogre has been in the room. Just in case <laughs> you guys were, you were following us. Yes, he's been here the whole time. So, and he's actually talked about the game a little more than I thought. Exactly. So, yeah, the rumors of ogre quitting DCL are true. So let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. What do you want to hear? I mean, well, why did you more. quit? Tell us more. <laughs> are you like done, done, or like, are you done for now? Uh, uh, are you coming back soon? Are you I'm rebirthing? Coming soon. <laughs> I might. <laughs> um, I, I probably will at least check out rebirth with my camo, just because I have to. But assuming that's the only thing that happens anytime soon, I don't see myself playing the game. Again, it's been coming for a long time, as you guys are aware. I know the audience probably isn't terribly aware, but I've been talking about this for a long time now. The game has lost a lot of uh, interest for me over the course of probably the last, what, six months now? Because of all the work that I've had to do and everything else that's been going on, I it really put into perspective that when I get home, DCL wasn't the game that I was logging into. You know, it kind of put that in perspective of, how fun is this game really for me right now? And because I've completed everything years ago, you know, as far as story content and everything else, it's like I don't have anything that I do aside from the couple of missions for hero challenges and whatnot. And it's like, that's it. Like, And you've never been a so, big, you've never been real high. I'm, on I'm not a big PvP player, no. I, I am a PvE player. I, I love the PvE. Uh, and that's why all of my videos were 95% about, you know, how do you use this character in PvE? What kind of teams can you build? That's where I like to play. I don't like PvP. So them adding, you know, showdowns and sieges and all this other stuff. And it's like, I could care less about all of that stuff. And then people were always asking you like, hey man, what's a viable comp for PvP? And you're like, well, I guess you could do that. Whatever. Yeah, pretty right. much. Like, I'm not a, I'm not a meta person. I don't know PvP. I can, I know what works for me just because I can make it work. But that doesn't mean it's going to work for you the way that it works for me because I put in the back hours where I do a lot of study. I know what all the characters do. I know the order of their turn sequence. Like, there's a lot of things that I know just because I do a lot of background study that you're not going to understand if I try to explain it to you necessarily. And I'm not saying everybody wouldn't understand. I'm saying that without some of the knowledge that I go in depth trying to find, some of the things that I do don't make sense. So if, so let's say on the heels of Rebirth, some new, interesting, challenging content comes out, would that be enough to possibly woo you back? I'm certainly not going to say yes, but I am certainly throwing no out the window. If that's what you're implying. Yeah, I think it's just hope. That's a fair enough answer. Now, yeah, that, like how you were saying, PvP wasn't a thing that you were into from pretty much from the beginning, but there were times where you were playing PvP. Now, did this change uh, before, after the, like, let's say, the Deathstroke meta or the Wonder Girl meta, or did the fact that the Wonder Girl meta have, like, w- is what it was really kept you away from PvP altogether? Okay, so... I've never been huge into PvP, and 
when the Deathstroke meta was around, it just kind of made it really stale. Like, I enjoyed fighting against different teams. That way I can, you know, experience my characters a little bit, you know. But if I'm fighting the same team over and over, it gets really annoying because I'm not actually experiencing anything. Uh, and so the Deathstroke meta kind of set that in motion in the first place. The Wonder Girl meta has really solidified that same issue again. And it's just like, I'm tired of facing the same two to three teams every match. Yep. I am tired of it. I will literally sit there and refresh my boards until I find an opponent that is unique. But unfortunately, in the last good while, I would say, you have to refresh a lot of times to find that. Right. And that's why I stopped trying to get top 1500 and stuff. It's like, all right, I'm going to drop down to sidekick and play where people actually want to have fun. And that's what I did. Even then, I still didn't want to do PvP all that much just because whatever. I mean, I didn't really have a point to do PvP if I'm down in sidekick. I was literally just playing when I would want to just because, hey, let's try this out. So some people are asking, have you moved on to a new game? Which, you know, I don't know. Ravid, if you've been following our channel, we have we do have a mistress that we've been courting so yeah yeah we i actually uh even before that one uh i actually downloaded disney hero battles about four months ago because i was like i need something else to play alongside dcl or i am literally just going to throw this game out the window and not play it at all and i was trying to to hold on you know till the end of the year so i downloaded disney hero battle uh, as the one that I was playing on the uh, like the secondary game, trying to hold out for this new content and stuff, and it just didn't happen. The new content didn't happen, yeah. unfortunately. So uh, I'm still hopeful that it will come, but I'm not holding my breath anymore at this point because yeah. I went ahead and deleted the game. I'm like, I'll re-download you whenever you give me something to play. And the competition so. for mobile games uh, is just getting you know tougher and tougher out there because there's going to be even more games coming out in the future that really has, mm -hmm. you know, that has to compete like DCL has to compete with that stuff right and just to be very honest with you when Diablo Immortal comes out even though it got a lot of uh, bad press when it came out a lot of people who are fans of Diablo and fans of mobile games are going to play the crap out of that game right so so you know we're waiting for that too and it's also part of the reason why we have a placeholder game too in, in you know the other games that we play so it's not the fact that this game might not be uh, a big game for us, but you know, Diablo is also something that we really want to try as well. Now, and then the other game we've started playing is Ion Legions of War, which I got into because I used to play the Ion MMO, and I have to say it's a really good game. I really like it. And loot from our alliance, he joined. He's hopelessly addicted; like he plays that nonstop. And then I know Ogre, you've gotten pretty into it. So is Doombox. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Doom, Doombox dove like dove right, right into his money pit like Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's like face first right into that money pit. <laughs> it, it has a lot of PvE content, so I knew Ogre would like it. It, it does playing. have a lot of PvE content, and that's actually why I'm playing it. Yeah, because if it was just PvP, I don't care. Now that doesn't say that doesn't mean that Ogre is going to be gone for you guys listening from you know WRL broadcast. He's still around. He's still here in some capacity. We we are still doing content for other stuff. Uh, he might from time to time show up uh, to do <clears throat> podcast or something like that. Or maybe uh, when we start talking about um, when he gets ca caught up with the other DC shows, maybe he'll be on the the Watchtower with me and some other guests. So yeah, you know, Ogre will show up from time to time still, right? Yeah, I'm still going to be around. Yeah. He's a regular on our Ion podcast that we had started. And um, mm -hmm. so, and then depending on what DCL does, he may come back to us. Yeah. But. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to write off the idea that I'm not coming back. Like I'm, there is a, a very strong possibility that I'll at least come back and check out the new content. And if it's good, it'll stick around for a while. You know, like. On a side note, we, th we should bring that up. We've kind of moved WR broadcast to be a mobile gaming podcast because some of us are going different directions. I mean, me, DP, Kage, we're all still hard into DCL. But um, as other games come and go, you know, some of us may bounce onto it. But we decided instead of doing multiple channels, we're going to stay under the WRL moniker. So our YouTube channel will have a variety of games. We have Ion going pretty consistently on there now. And then Ogre may, you mentioned, possibly doing Disney Hero Battle. So And there may be other games... Um, 
when the Magic the Gathering mobile game possibly is released later this year, we may go heavy into that. And I know DP is If huge. Arena actually goes mobile. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. There's a lot of things pointing towards that. Now, oh. there was one thing... Anyways, well, I don't want to talk about this too much in depth, in length, but... Um, Magic Magic has recently announced, I think it was Hasbro or Wizards of the Coast announced that they're working on another mobile game uh, in addition to working on Arena and the other and Magic Online. So that means they have another thing on the docket that might come to mobile before Magic Arena, which is currently really well received, come to Arena, like come to mobile. This doesn't make sense. It's like if Hearthstone decided to make uh, another mobile game that's like Hearthstone, or let's call it Hearthstone Light before Hearthstone actually came to mobile. That's just kind of a stupid idea, all right? That's weird. Yeah. But anyways, uh, whenever that comes around, um, I'm going to be making tons of content on that because I'm already pretty heavy into that. And so is some of my Alliance members, um, the JLR. So I wouldn't be surprised if that just really, really took off once mobile, once it hit mobile. But anyways, uh, when that, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So um, leaving things on a more positive note, as Hate was saying, you know, we will stay as WRL broadcast on YouTube. All our gaming stuff will be on there. It'll be probably not 100% DCL anymore, maybe not even 90%. It'll go down to something like 70 or 60% DCL. But... There'll still be DCL content there. Just don't be surprised. You'll see, you know, other non-DCL content. The audio versions, if you're if you listen audio only, those we're going to for now have separate feeds for everything because it just doesn't make sense to put them all in the same feed. But the YouTube, there's different folders for a reason. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, you know, we'll sort of apologize in advance if you feel like you're getting spammed by other non-DCL related content uh, on your YouTube feed. Just maybe you can try to filter that out, but you know we'll have everything in playlists uh, if you're subscribed to our channel. So, anyways, I guess that is a good way to segue to the the show wrap up. So, as we do at the end of every show, uh, we have to shout out our patrons at the Zatanna level or higher. So currently we have Tudytron hanging out the, at the Zatanna level, uh, which earns him uh, his topic suge- uh, suggestion each episode and this shout out. So. Uh, also, another special shout out to our newest patron at the Jimmy Olsen tier, which is uh, Brian T. So, thanks for being uh, a supporter. And if you guys want to be heroes like these guys, uh, helping us keep the lights on, consider supporting us uh, over on patreon.com slash WRL broadcasts. So, and if you haven't noticed, DP really needs a new mic, so we need some patrons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's my mic, dog? <laughs> uh it's in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, with that, I guess we'll wrap things up there. So, with that, good night, guys. Have good night, DP. See you. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of WROL Broadcasts, a subsidiary of the Oddsman and We Are Legends. To view additional content and support the show, please go to patreon.com slash W-R-O-L broadcasts.